Planning Board will call to order. First up for general information is James George. Yeah. What would you like me to do? Yeah. Right, well, tell us what you are Have here for. Have a seat. Good evening. For the record, my name is James George. I am the uh, permanent manager for a company called Mobility. Mobility is doing a national small cell project on behalf of Sprint and others, but Sprint is our main client. I have uh, worked through the, uh, the Board of Selectmen. We've had a public hearing, and what we, what we are proposing to do is to utilize right-of-way space uh, from, from the jurisdiction and plant new, <coughs> well, at the moment, one utility pole in the right-of-way space, either in the mass dot right-of-way space where we have land control or in the jurisdictional right-of-way space at the edge of the wireless overlay district at Mill Valley Road, coming up Route 9, that corner where you take the hard right at Mill Valley, that's about where your wireless overlay district ends. That's where I'm going to propose the pole. This particular pole is, <coughs> will house a small cell antenna, a small three-foot antenna on the top of it. <coughs> I, I'm going to seek through site plan approval, 55 feet. Uh, I believe that's allowed in the ordinance. Or I would, I would work to get whatever I can, I can pull off. The thing about these types of poles <clears throat> is they're going to be smaller in nature with a wireless small cell antenna on the top of it to add value to the proposal. We're going to propose a light, if that is the will of the body, an LED light to illuminate that area uh, or, and or a camera. We're doing a lot of cameras with jurisdictions that want to see the intersection and maybe pipe it into your existing cameras that go into your public safety. So the facility itself is essentially going to be a 55-foot designed steel metal pole, very similar in nature and look to the mass dot poles that you see coming off 91. There's two of them right in a row. This particular pole design, steel metal, I'd call that 50 feet. And they put a camera up there. So mass dot has come all the way from Springfield all the way up Route 91, all the way to the Vermont border with these types of facilities. Mm -hmm. That, that's essentially what we're, what we're proposing. Uh, we acknowledge that although we are a CLEC, a competitive local exchange carrier that has the right to be in the right-of-way space, either through the state property or the juris jurisdictional right-of-way, uh, because it has a wireless antenna, it is a wireless application. <clears throat> so we're going to seek the approval of the right-of-way space through the, body of, through the Board of Selectmen and come before this body for the site plan review. The pole itself and the attachments, the appurtenances, the wireless antennas, et cetera, <clears throat> are going to pay taxes on the chattel. So similar in nature to what Verizon and Eversource and, and the Lex do that transport the electricity in the town in the right-of-way space, they pay taxes, personal property tax on their chattel, the pole, the conduits, and the, the hardware that they have. So we're in a similar classification. So the upsides to the jurisdiction, are it, it is taxable in nature. We've gone through your assessing department and your town administrator and discussed the taxes and, uh, and the value of the camera and the light to the, to the jurisdiction. So that's what we're proposing. Now, you're talking the right of way space. You're talking the right of way of Mill Valley Road? Or there right, were, what, what right of way are you speaking about? Okay, there's two options. It was originally proposed in Mill Valley Road down by the, uh, down by the, you take the right on your way to the farm. There's a, there's a, Storage facility off to the left. I feel as if the, the, it's going to be wet in along that right-of-way space. We've done some survey work down there. We're considering moving it up closer to Route 9 at the, at the, at the intersection there where the Commons is. That's state, state right-of-way space, and as you take the right, it becomes the Mill Valley right-of-way space. I think through survey, and once we get the plans together, uh, it, will be, it'll be, it will end up in the Mass Dot Route 9 right-of-way space rather than the Mill Valley town-owned right-of-way space. Either way, your compensation is taxes for the chattel. So we, we can't give the jurisdiction to allow you to build in the state right-of-way. We would come forward with land control from the, from the state of Massachusetts, the MassDOT Mass -Dot people, that would allow us the right to be in their right-of-way space. I think where, where this body comes in is Oftentimes, people don't know where to put us. We acknowledge that it is a wireless communications facility that we're building, so that's why we're coming before this body. 
and that's what that's what the proposal will be site plan review what's, what's, what's just talking about one at the moment what one I'm talking about one at the moment yes one, one pole antenna structure yes and how many for the future say it again how many you got planned for the future well okay I believe we're going to have one more closer towards the highway coming forward in what my territory is coming all the way up Route 2 and all the way up into Route 91, I, I have several hundred sites. The notion way up here, up along 91, is to try to launch some kind of backhaul and bandwidth towards the Wired West territory, start on the New York border and come this way. So we're really trying to focus on that area out towards the west. This is a backhaul densification program. And what does that mean? Sprint is currently propagating in your community. Uh, they're on towers and they're propagating. The high value areas to us are the, are the clover leaves and the highways and the dense, dense areas of UMass Amherst, I'm all over that, and the college areas. The high, the, high the high density areas of the most population is sucking the bandwidth currently out of our network. This, because they're going to be low to the ground in the small cell and we're going to do more of them, it basically densifies an area to handle the capacity that is needed for the backhaul and the, and the, and the bandwidth by the users. Bill, um, Bill is okay. there any difference between this and the request that we had to give went to for Verizon and North Hadley at the Montgomery Groves? What's the issue there? I'm well, it seems to be that this is in a, um, it's all land located in the business district and industrial district is, is an allowed use. Yeah. Yeah. So, but when, but it, it also it, says that weren't allowed use it, 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 federal law yeah. says we have to approve it, doesn't it? No. It no. also says no tower should be located closer than two miles to any other such tower. There's right. at least two towers located in less than two miles of where you're proposing this. Well, here's the thing. I would um, come forward and seek a waiver on that item. We can't waive it. What would be the remedy on that? Zone, Allow me to zone, finish my point, though. Zoning Board of Appeals. Allow me to finish my point, though. Yeah. Depends on how you classify what I'm doing. I have the right to be in the right-of-way space as a competitive local exchange carrier. Uh, I am acknowledging that it is a wireless application, but I'm not calling myself a cellular tower. It's a small cell densification project. So when confronted with this question about can't be within two miles, I would say it extends a non-conforming use. That's one argument that I've used. Um, if it does, if it is the will of this body that it requires a waiver or something relief related, then Zoning Board of Appeals is the body. Okay. We do not classify cellular towers. Our towers are called wireless communication. Okay. So if you're a wireless communication, then you fall into the zoning bylaw. I acknowledge the zoning bylaw. The, the issue that you brought up is not within two miles of an, existing, of an existing tower. I'm looking to waive that. I'm looking to build a utility facility, whatever you want to call it, at this location to densify that given area. And it only goes a matter of blocks. It's not a big cell tower. It's not a big eight-foot antenna. I'm looking to densify that intersection. I don't, it's, it really is about this too. We want to do several of these so we don't have to pay others. It's, it's not a macro project. That's not what I need. I need a smaller facility in between these other towers. So that two mile radius is relevant, but that two mile radius is going like this. I need to be right here. So that's, that's what I'm... So there's a tower behind Stop and Shop. Yep. And there's a tower at the Public Safety Complex. There's yep. a tower inside the water tower. There's a tower inside the water tower. There's a tower inside the old quality motel on what it's no, called now. No, those aren't towers under the definition. Those are, uh, tower is a structure designed to facilitate the services. Okay. Communications okay. facilities, everything else. So the water tower and the hotel are facilities. They are not Communications towers. Okay, because they're getting all right. So that I think we might be okay. We still have to check the distance from public safety and from stop and check. Oh, sure. What's the overall height it's supposed to be? Fifty-five. Fifty-five feet. feet. I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's more than two miles from the public safety. And what's this two mile rule? Who came up with that? Fourteen point five point three of the zoning bylaw. 
Did an engineer say this is? 14.5.3 is in the zoning bylaws. It doesn't matter where it, it came from. It, it, is, it is the law. Even of the, though it may not be. It is the law true. of the yeah. town. Now remember, that, may not work that's a good it. argument for repealing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Now remember, this, this bylaw was written in 1997 yeah. and yeah. amended 1998. So it's pretty near 20 years old. And the by, certain portions of the bylaw could be yeah. out of date. Nobody had an iPhone yet. I'm only telling you I, I when the bylaw was written. That's, but, that's but, a good but clarification. This, yeah. but, but Can we just be friendly all, today? Yeah, but this is still the bylaw. So the but other. I don't want to put you past your time, you guys. You got a busy agenda. Yeah. You let me pull back, take a look, and uh, I still need to get my final authority from the board of selectmen. Uh, this was an informal hearing to try to get a pulse. Right. I think I've got a pulse, and I, I intend to move it forward once I have the will of the body. So you wouldn't have any other structures related to it? The pole is in the ground. There's no ground space. It's typical to the pole that you see uh, on that mass dot up by the bridge. Okay, so there's no uh, little mini building next to it for any controls or anything like that? No. The, the, the chattel, you've got the antenna, and you've got a, a couple of boxes on it. So the, everything is on the, on the pole. There's no ground space. Okay. You dig a hole and plant it. How does it connect? How is it powered? How does All right. it connect? We find the power wherever it is. We either pull the power from wherever it is above ground to the facility or we trench. So either one of those is going to come out in a construction drawing. And this is a holistic design. I don't need telco, which is, you know, the, the, the internet piece. We have a small uh, dish on it, what they call a UA relay, that's going to actually see the existing, the existing propagation from Sprint and work it that way. So it's a wireless play. It's everything seeing each other. That's why it's the small ones amongst the big ones. Does this go back to a thing a few years ago that I was reading about where, as opposed to putting up a big, large antenna, there's a bunch of little smaller ones that transmit to each other sort of a deal? Yes, that's okay. exactly. This is what 5G is going to be all about. This okay. is how all carriers are advancing 5G, away from the big towers and the big antennas densifying areas that need the pockets of coverage. Okay. And the only way to do that, zonability-wise, is to do little towers, so little, little so facilities. So, so this is something that's been around for a little bit, but was finally coming to fruition, where there is a number of small towers rather close together, but they don't go way up in here because they don't need that. Is that that's, correct? That is exactly correct. Okay. Yes. That is exactly correct. Yeah, the bylaws, correct. That we, we've got to correct the bylaws. And you can't use someone else's towers. It has to be a spread tower. My business model is to not use existing tower facilities and pay their rent that they want. We want to own the facility. We have done attachments to existing wood poles, like the Eversource poles. We have agreements with them, if appropriate, to attach to the existing wood poles. I consider this a little, I consider this a little bit more appropriate to plant my own pole. And uh, if I were to use 30 footers, 28 footers that, they, that are there, I'm going to need to plant more. So. The bylaw is attractive in the way of allowing me 55 feet. I can live with that. And if I have land control for the state property mass dot on Route 9, I will have land control to advance to, a, to the body that will give me ultimately my approval for the permit. But, but sh shouldn't the towers be common carriers? Anybody could use them subject to regulations such as natural gas, oil and gas, oil, oil pipelines? Yes, my SELEC designation um, allows for co-location. So I would say, I would say to you, I would, I would you would put a condition for co-location ability, but I think that I'm loading up the co-location ability in a 55-foot structure, steel structure, to the public safety and the cameras. But if, if another carrier comes and it can be pulled off structurally, they can, they can put their equipment on my pole as well. It just seems to me that technology is advancing so rapidly that asking to put one of these every, what, a quarter mile because you need density is going to be obsolete in no time at all. And so you're, you're saying that you're going to need more than one of these in Hadley, is that correct? That's correct. How many do you think you're going to need? Three. That end, middle, the other end. Uh -huh. That's what I see. They wanted this one to be tall originally, tall. I don't think that's zonable at this particular location. I think we get into a big soup there. So we're sort of moving it down, meeting the bylaw requirement of height and trying to go through the process to get what your ordinance tells me I can get. Mm. Now, another argument that I make, just to wrap it up, is the mass dot facilities that you see coming off the highway, that the, the picture that I showed you, those are on mass dot. We're, we're, we're paralleling that, we're mirroring that model. You can see those all the way up 91. 
If I come in with state land, one could argue, and I don't think I will, what was their zoning experience? Did they just come in and build that 50, 55 footer over there? Uh, that's, that's typically what the state does. And in certain circumstances, if I'm in a cloverleaf, say Bernardston, for, for example, I'm in a cloverleaf, they've got this tower there, I simply want to put mine on the other side of the cloverleaf to look exactly like it. But I'm going through the planning board, and it seems to be that's the pathway. Just to take a look, here's my plans, but what did the state do? Did they just go in and build it? Yes. But so that's what they Getting back to what I asked you, there is a tower that the competition has that you could use if you're willing to pay the rent. No. No? Why did you, I, why would, did you answer I that would, question like well, that? Well, we don't need that answer here. Okay, well, okay. We, we, because we're not having a hearing. This is not something we're trying to debate and discuss. This is just well, you're setting a Well, we're stuff. setting a precedent here, too, though, Jim. We are, there's no such thing as a precedent. Well, I, zoning doesn't sell precedent. Zoning doesn't set precedent. Well, I know it's new. I know it's new. I've been doing this a while. I know it's new. I'll just so, uh, sit you, here you know, we're, not, we're not trying to argue the point. We're trying to not call a public hearing and make decisions. This is just information. So thank you very much for your time. Um, you know, we've asked you some questions, you have us some answers, and granted the bylaw needs to be updated. Okay, thank you very much, guys. Okay, okay. Thank you. Randy. I have two A and R plans. One on River Drive in North Hadley. And the address is 346 River Drive. David Tudrin and his wife Pamela. And we are creating a lot that is not a building lot in order to sell to the neighbor. And the purpose for this is to prevent another house from being built in here. Uh, David's house is up here. And there is enough frontage currently between this house lot and this house lot over here to have two 175-foot <coughs> lots. Um, but the Palmazanos don't want to see that, so they worked out a deal with Tudrins that they could buy this, and they control this. Tudrins control the rest. There's no way they can have a house between the two of them unless they decide in the future to be co-conspirators and put the land back together. So you're, we're slicing this piece out of this piece? Correct. Okay. And there is a note on it that it's not a building lot and it's to be conveyed to Palmazanos to create one undivided parcel. But this is two days lot no? Yes. Everybody's going to go at once. Do you, do you need some? No, no, no. I'm just. Stick around. It, oh, I'm not going anywhere. Usually this gets very interesting when we try it this way. I just had dinner with my family and I started <laughs> serving to the left and to the right simultaneously.
Okay. George? bit more intriguing. Hmm. Grand Oak Farms. Uh, off of Bay Road. Uh, so I, I'm just going to spread it out and then I will explain what's going on. About three years ago, I came before the board, um, uh, Daniel Mastis House is number 168 Bay Road. So we created a legal building lot for his house. He had some extra land in the back, which if you look at this, I'm trying to make this understandable for everybody. So the blue, the blue triangle is what was left over from a master's prop a house lot. The yellow is a lot, it's, it was a parcel on Grand Oak Farm, the original subdivision. It wasn't big enough to qualify as a building lot. So when in 2013, I did this plan, we had the blue and the yellow together. You can see inside there's a 150 foot square that would not fit inside the blue and the yellow. So Kathy Benben is willing to sell to Omasta the pink, which will allow the 150 foot square to fit in to all this. Now typically we get concerned about further subdivision in a subdivision. Uh, I went through and found the covenants of this subdivision when it was created in 19 whatever. Anyhow, one of the, the first uh, order of their covenant was no lot or combination of lots shall be subdivided or modified in any way for the purpose of increasing or enlarging the total number of lots upon which single family residential structures may be constructed. I read that and I thought, okay, done deal. But then you go to the last page. The covenants and restrictions of this declaration shall run with and bind the land and shall inure to the benefit of the developers, blah, 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 until December 31st, 2006. So their covenants have expired. And I know I asked the question when I did this previous plan as to whether the subdivision approval decision said anything about no further subdivision and I feel quite certain that it I mean I know I'm I know I talked to my, Bill yeah, my recollection is that that was one of the very first ones that what was the date of the subdivision uh, 87 87 87 so that was the uh, actually the first year I was on the board and at that time I wasn't putting in the <clears throat> no further subdivision clause. So it appears to me that this is legitimate. Who owns the lot? The, the, okay, so the yellow and the blue are owned by Debbie McCretzky and Greg Omaska. And the pink is Kathy Bemben. And she is they're in negotiations to transfer the land. So it <coughs> may not happen, but I'm told it's supposed to. If it does, great. If it doesn't, the plan is moot and doesn't matter. Uh, 
So it satisfies all other requirements. You have the frontage. Yeah. You have the square footage. Correct. And you have the square able to fit in there. Yes. <clears throat> Anything legally we're missing here, Bill? No. I no. think the, the one thing that current subdivisions have that clause about no further subdivision, right. but this one has to have the expiration date on it. Yep. And the, the subdivision approval didn't have that clause either. Okay. From yeah, that right. from that vintage. I know, Joe, your head was too small way back then to do that. <laughs> the square needs to be bigger, the geometry. The square should square? be bigger? It's not too hard with a computer. No. Yeah. I love that. Those are fun. Trying Randy, you can explain no to Mike and John about the square in. and. Uh, the square. Hey, what's. There's not one inch of extra land. There is a little bit in the, in the back. I pushed it about. Where? I can't. You got a magnifying glass? On this, but it's. Uh, not quite six inches away from the line in the back. Usually, oh. usually I'll make them right there. That a boy. This one, I said, what the heck? We'll no waste. Extra. Randall, yeah. no waste. No. Sometimes you can't afford waste. That's in case he missed the tangent of the road by a little bit. He wanted to make sure he got it. That's oh, what it no. was. No, I make sure it's with the computer. It's so easy to do this stuff. Oh, to make just, it dead. You say tell it to go 150 feet this oh, way, yeah. 150 feet that way, and connect the dots. So. As long as you know how to tell so it. So you have plans for this, or you just want to talk about it? No, plan? that's that's the plan. The the mylar's here somewhere. There you go. Under one of you guys, right here. Start sign. You want the pretty picture though? Or you want me to take it away? Take it. You don't want to sign out of that. The big ones. Okay. The big ones. The big ones. So you can see what was going on. Oh, I see. Help you to understand. And in, in, at the next meeting, more than likely, I'll be back with an a &R on the Wilga property on Rocky Hill Road, just past Breckenridge. There's uh, about 11 acres in there. It's extremely wet. We're going to run into the uh, 
criteria of how much upland you have to have on a lot to be legitimate. So we'll be doing some calculations relative to that. So so an A&R or something? Yeah, A&R. There's no way a subdivision could win there. There's 11 acres they can build two houses. Who is that right behind Wilga? Wilga. Across, across, just past across Breckenridge Ridge on the left-hand side. So Randy did have a question about <coughs> the um, whether the whether in section 5.6 wetlands restrictions on building lots uh, every building lot created after the effective date shall contain uh, one third acre of upland if the lot is not to be soared. Um, one quarter if it is. One quarter if it is. For upland is defined as land which is neither defined as wetlands nor located within 100 feet of such wetlands. So the issue that Randy has is there is upland but it's not contiguous. And I think Bill, I went back to my office and looked and I had somebody looking at this site trying to get three lots out of it. And that's when I would have had to get really creative with the upland, but I think there's not going to be a problem with the, just the two. But in, in the future, if that were to come up, is does it does the upland have to be contiguous? This was a request that was done by Alexandra Dawson to bless this hole when she was on the Conservation Commission. And I'm trying to think what her interpretation of that was. I, I think believe the interpretation. It was, I, believe, I believe it was contiguous. Is that right? I thought it was. I suggested as long as the buildable site could contain the structure, driveway, septic system. The only place that I could see where this may have applied is the one that was on Farm Lane, where they had pieces. They tried to get a building lot out of that that was right below oh, yeah, the. Yeah, 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 Florence. Uh, Palmquist land. Yes. And I believe, I'm trying to think on that one, they had pieces throughout, but nothing was joined. <clears throat> and I think the determination back then was that they didn't have a buildable lot. I'm pretty sure that they had <clears throat> a third of an acre in pieces because that had that was several acres that lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. And I believe that ended up being not buildable because they didn't have a contiguous piece. You might want to talk to conservation. Yeah, about that, that. Would, that would be more that's their interpretation because that's really where it came from. Okay. All right. Well, I don't need it for this upcoming one, but and if we get, if I get one that's going to be that tight, I don't even want to deal with it anyhow. I mean, that's getting ridiculous. That that would be <clears throat> that'd be like putting really together. They would they would be using the AutoCAD mm -hmm. per square foot is to a yeah. bigger big big degree. Yeah. I'll even. Oh yeah, we should be should be should, we should be, be clear on that. That's it for general. Okay, um, we have two continuations for this. That's all for general information. We have two continuations. I'm assuming most of the people here may be for the. Uh, um, We've got one Eversource, two Valley Building. Mostly here for Valley Building or Eversource? Eversource? I'm not. I was, I was actually, I just had to drop off some Butters labels for you guys. I was here a couple weeks ago about the tap room. <clears throat> wait, I'm happy to wait. I just came in late. And okay. Started, so. All right. Um, well, let's go. Which one do we want to go with? Which one is first? We have every source on our list first. I think that's got fewer issues probably in front of it than the uh, Valley Building. So, continuation of the ever source. I think we got a couple of. One was screening. I think really that was the big one. Yeah, this is all right. Take a second. Sign-in sheet? Pardon? Sign-in sheet? No. Today? This is uh, okay. reservations for the walk-in session.
So much for that. So much for that. The solar plant fell over. Yeah. Roll hydro. So we get lots of solar. That's not the trend. Good point. Okay. I've got three copies of these. This was the um, ortho photo. Just to so uh, first of all, um, just to introduce myself uh, again, Mike Gagnon. With Mall Automation representing uh, Eversource. Uh, since the last hearing, I believe was on the 21st of February, um, there was a couple of requests um, that were made by the Commission, uh, as well as at that point, uh, we were still in the midst of uh, going through review by the Conservation Commission. So first and foremost, what I'd like to present, uh, which I just handed out reduced copies, is the ortho plan. It actually shows the distances um, from the nearest residences. So essentially, and again, just to give you an orientation um, for everybody else that's in the room, um, South Maple Street, off to the left, Moody Bridge Road, um, to the north of the site here. And we picked out, there were three primary residences that are proximal um, to the site. Uh, there was an abutter um, up at the intersection of Moody Bridge Road in South Maple. Uh, that house is about 770 feet. Um, the closest abutter, um, which is actually to the northeast, uh, is about 617 feet. And then the last abutter, um, which is at the southwest corner down here, is about 823 feet. Um, the other request that was made was to enhance the planting such that we could further screen the facility from view, uh, particularly from South Maple. And that actually shows up on the plan um, that's in front of you as well, too. So what we did is we extended, if you recall, the previous plan. Um, we had stopped the plantings roughly in this area here um, along the south uh, fence line. So what we did is we extended um, those plantings all the way out to the corner here. And then likewise to the north to screen the facility from view from the north, we extended the line of plantings um, along this line here. And essentially, we maximized the available area um, to stay without, to stay out of the uh, wetlands uh, resource area. Um, this plan was presented um, to Conservation Commission because obviously the, the question was whether or not that uh, plantings could be uh, placed within the upland area and particularly within the 35-foot uh, no-build. And um, that didn't appear to be a significant issue uh, with conservation. Um, speaking of conservation, the notice of intent hearing was closed on March 28th. Um, and we just received our order of conditions via email um, this evening from Janice Stone. So um, other than that, those are essentially the, the noteworthy um, changes um, that have been made to the plan. Um, in addition, I should mention too, um, I believe that the plan that you saw previously, there was a question about stormwater management. And uh, we did, and again, this, this was all presented um, to the Conservation Commission rec recognizing stormwater management is regulated um, under the Act. And we had revised the analysis such that we looked at the entire site as the contributing area um, to Moody Bridge Road culvert um, to the north here. And essentially by, um, in layman's terms, because all of the area from the site essentially contributes to the intermittent stream um, that stops roughly in this area. Uh, when we analyze the discharge at the Moody Bridge Road culvert as a result of the proposed conditions on the site, 
there was virtually no change um, in peak flow. Uh, just because the, the swale um, that runs along the easterly side of the site is very flat, um, it gets very wide, particularly out here in the meadow, and it has a capability of uh, dampening the flows significantly. So we were able to omit or uh, uh, remove those small pocket basins um, that we had shown previously. It was, uh, they, they were actually questioned um, by DEP whether or not they were necessary, and you know we concluded um, through the further analysis that they weren't. So, um, be glad to answer any questions you may have. Total site is 30 acres. Yes. And the solar panels. About 31 acres. 31 acres. Yep. And solar panels will cover. The active project area is about 4.8 acres. Can we just remind us what the capacity is of the site? Okay. Yeah, I've got that in my notes somewhere. Uh, it's just about one megawatt. It's actually 0 0.9. Okay. The uh, bylaw states that large scale ground mounted solar energy systems and appurtenant structures shall be adequately screen from view from public ways and neighboring properties with vegetation or behind other existing structures. Uh, I noticed that one of the fields put in on Mill, Mill Valley Road had plantings, as you call them, plantings, and it certainly doesn't adequately screen that field from anything. I mean, those, those trees or whatever were planted there might grow up in 10 years to adequately, adequately screen. I don't think the bylaw says in 10 years, it says immediately. How do you plan to address that? These plantings on this site, we intend to, at, at planting, uh, they're gonna be about six to eight feet high, which is about the same height of the fence. Okay. Um, okay. One of the things that uh, Eversource would, and, and not to speak from them, is that they would maintain um, those plantings uh, for the duration of the project and one of the things that we look at um, is we just you know particularly you know from this view and and also to the north if you notice we actually do like a double staggered row so that unlike having a single row of plantings where you know you'll have a tree and yeah. a tree and you've got you know this space where you can see right through uh, in between we actually stagger the planting so that effectively it creates that natural um, barrier. So that's why we provided the, the double row of uh, plantings um, along each area. How far between trees? About 10 to 12 feet, roughly. And the one in the middle, so they're, they're, they're like five foot on center. What are you talking about? He's talking about the center of tree to center of tree. Yeah. Um, I think we actually have, if you look at our planting schedule on the legend sheet, we actually specify. Yeah, so the, the, the uh, particularly the uh, firs that are specified are, I'm sorry, are eight feet in diameter. So I would expect um, those are going to probably, up, and I'm saying approximately six feet on center when they're planted. Again, what that will do is that it will allow them to grow full so that you'll get overlap in the branches. But one of the things that you don't want to do is plant um, the uh, the trees too close together because they'll actually smother themselves. What kind of spe species of a tree? Uh, actually, we got several types. Uh, we've got Fraser firs, we've got white firs, um, blue spruce. Uh, we also have some mountain laurel um, planted in there as well, and some dogwoods. So it's it's a mix um, set of vegetation. Well, I'd rather see something that's going to be green all year round. 
Well, Mount Laurel is not green all year round. I think that's just along the front to kind of right. make it look a little more natural instead of like a green wall. The right. green the firs, be behind it? The firs yeah. will be green um, all year round. Yeah, the, the mountain laurels are just in front just to sort of break it up visually a little bit so it's not just in the wall. How high is the highest uh, panel sticking out of the ground? About seven feet at, at the back of the panel. And the fence is going to be eight feet. I should think they put like eight foot trees right about it. Well, they said six to eight feet. Well, six, well, no, this panel is seven foot. Yeah, it's saying not six feet, it's eight feet. Any other questions the board? Any questions of anybody in the audience? Yes, I do. John Rowe and 10 South Maple Street. So the, my house is located south of you. Mm -hmm. It's the large house that is just off the map. It might be. It Did might you be. consider this house? It's right about here. That looks that would look face directly into the panel. Not only will it be in, have an industrial feel in a, in a farmland. I don't know, glare. There's no glare. There's no glare on these panels. If you find a, if you find a solar panel with glare. Whoever put them in wants to know because I'm not trying to be a wise guy here. Sure. But the reason there's no glare is because they want all the light energy absorbed. They don't want to reflect anything. So if you find some place for the solar panels that are reflecting, they want to know about it because they can short it. Okay. So how far are you requesting some fencing Joe, plantings? I'll be looking directly into that. I, w I would think that the, 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 ever tr the trees in front would pretty much screen it. No, he's just no, no way. Well, he's up higher. You can't he's address that. Yeah, you can. You can well, put he could put, put on his north north. He can put uh, the trees on that side as well. Well, he's up high there. Wouldn't you? The only way you do it is to put screening on his north boundary, so he's looking down. Those trees there, they would have to be 80 feet tall to yeah. him to block yeah, that you view. To something on, you would have to put something on, my, on the north yeah. side of my property. So, so we, 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 as a planning board, we do not have authority to go that route. I, I beg the difference on that because it Listen, says... Guys, I'm going to have to protect my investment no, no, and we're, we're, and we're not trying, But I'm not aware that we have authority to request right something on somebody else's property. Understood. No, but... No, but would you be do. satisfied if they put some screening on on the south side of their solar farm? You can't there, put there's hands. already trees. There's a whole line of trees. That's not going to cover no, the no, mustard. No, no, his, his, no. Is, oh, his, his is up to the right. Yeah, his, his house is up on a, on a little bit of a rise where, to John's point, those trees would have to be very, very tall. They would end up... They would end up Shadowing the panel for that. He won't live long enough to outgrow those trees. Definitely not. Yeah. This will have an impact on the value of my house. Well, the house was designed. Well, I certainly welcome your comments. You're the first, I think, citizen of Hadley that's really come here. It and is talked about facing what this. this is doing to the nature of Hadley. It's a commercial. It, th this is a, com a, a commercial business in a farmland. My, my house was designed around the landscape. It will have a significant impact to the value of the house. You perhaps heard my comments, they prioritize in front of a parking lot. This is what they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. No agree. question about I agree. this. I agree. With every source agreed to put a, a barrier on his northern boundary line to screen between his house and that, oh, seeing I'm it's up. elevated. Come on, let me ask that question. Let every source answer that. Without knowing the topography, I don't know what we could install that would appease him. I mean, if, if we could put a small row of trees, uh, you know, portion of his on his property, we might consider that. But then once we would plant them, and then we wouldn't be able to maintain them because that's not our priority. You know what I mean? Um, but if you're 100 feet over us, there's literally nothing we can do. Obviously, this complies with the bylaw, and then you can't. I'm you're sorry. trying to screen, but I, th I think. Yeah, the bylaw proves that this is not a proper site for a solar field. In Hadley, there's plenty of other ones. 
because you cannot adequately screen this from neighboring properties. And Mr. Earl's house is, is as far as I'm concerned, a neighboring property. It doesn't say a budding property. Yeah, you know, if you were living there, and you spent a million dollars in a house, and somebody's going to put this big, gigantic solar field in there, you'd be up in arms, too. I know I wouldn't. And I feel for him, he's got a beautiful house there, a beautiful landscape, and this is not going to add to his landscape. It's going to take away. I don't see any reason. <coughs> I don't see any reason why. place for the field. So the, the, uh, well, the right specific here, wording of the bylaws shall be adequately screened from shall. view from public ways and neighboring properties with vegetation. So um, I don't think that precludes us with Mr. Earl's consent from requiring that the screening be located on his property. On his property. If, I mean, if it's amenable to the property owners, I guess that would then bring it to a different category. Put, then you don't want to put it on his property. Plant 84 trees there. Well, that's not a reasonable solution. Well, I mean, it's view. So, and the only way you can break that view is either 84 trees here or smaller trees on his northern property. I think you would have built that house there if you had a solar field as far away from you. Not that kind of house. No. Are you kidding? You know, does ever sort of gives them a right to just go into the neighborhood and ruin people's evaluation and just do what they want to no, do? I, I can well, see, I, I'm, I'm, not, no. I'm supporting the neighbors and the local people that are here. Well, the Supreme Court law said a corporation is people, but in this decision, but I, I think uh, you get your point, John. Thank you. Uh, well, the screening, I mean, you could put a little taller trees on the southern side of the property where there is no screening now, that would that would hide it a little bit. No, not, yeah. not, not from the height that so, he's at. So how, how, much, how much high are you than that, 20 feet? Excuse me? Is your house about 20 feet, 30 feet higher than the field? Roughly. Yeah, that would, from that right. view, that would be way more than... You, uh, can't, you can't put that tree down by that array. It's going to be between, yeah. on his north you can't, property. Yeah. You can't, you, trees that big couldn't be transplanted. No. Okay. And to Mike's point, in his lifetime, he probably wouldn't be high enough. And if you look at the solar array or the, the farm that's down, you know, that you just mentioned, it doesn't even screen the fence, never mind. It'll be 10 years before it even screens the fence. Yeah, I mean, the one they just did, they put trees like this. Yeah. A woodchuck one, you wouldn't even hire a, uh, hide a woodchuck running around. Okay, so that leads to a couple of questions. Um, first, do you think, Mr. Earl, that you might find a line of trees along your northerly boundary line a suitable solution? Along, the, along my northbound? Along your boundary. My northbound? Yeah. So the next question yeah. is, would Eversource consider planting them there? We would have to look at the details, see where it is, and, and how much, you know, how much planting would be adequate. Stuff that we have to take back and take a look at. That's, that's part, so that that that's that's fine. Okay. You know they could maybe do like we they did on the uh, the annex, the library annex. Let them put balloons the heights of those. That's all our way, and out to the outer perimeter. Then you can you can see, you know that exactly where that is. Qu question would be, let's assume that Eversource and Mr. Earl come to an agreement that trees are adequate. Mm -hmm. Would we still require trees on the southern? Absolutely, from the road, southerly um, fence line. What all? What about all the people that are driving on the road? I'm just raising a question. Well, that would be I'm to just the answering. west. It is. They do have trees indicated to the west. I, mean, I think what Jim is proposing, will we allow them to swap some of these trees no. for a trees along the Earl property line? Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. I'm just posing the question. Okay. I, I take it that no, 
nothing's come to the further discussions with the uh, conservation outfit. What do they call it? Well, this is what's before yeah. us. Yeah, so, I, don't, I know. Um, so, uh, our next meeting is in two weeks. Would that be enough time for everyone to get together and see if you can reach an agreement? Uh, I won't be here, and I'd kind of like to be here for the vote. One month? Perfect. The, um, that would be the May... Third Tuesday of May. Third I know, forgot my calendar. <laughs> What's the date of that? Oh, May 16th would be the meeting. Okay, We've already got... Well, you're not. That, that's the, we've got already got two other solar hearings with Mr. Goulet on that night, but that's fine. This won't take long. It'll we'll either be. It'll we'll either be. We can do it or we can't do it. Then the vote will be accordingly. And do we have the public hearing on the zoning articles yes. on the second? Yes, that will be. And we also have uh, Larry coming. Larry, yeah. I mean, I think it kind of just runs out there, but originally we only had the screening after that first load. If we could take that screening after the first load and agree to put it somewhere else, I think we could move forward tonight. Since it's the same number of trees, it wouldn't change our economics. So if we could agree to move that. Originally, we only added to the first load because we were trying to block his property, but if it's not working to block his property and we move closer to him, I mean, if you're looking at cars driving by, they're not going to be looking, this is five acres, they're not going to be looking, you know, that far in as you drive by. What do you think they're going to walk? They got tunnel vision. They're just gonna look here. Yeah, okay. People look out in the fields. <laughs> no, this is a this is a scenic byway. People people are parked here, taking pictures, out into the field and out all over the place here. Painters get out there. You, paint oh, oils. all the time. This is not so. This is not something to play with. Yeah. This, people are here all the time, looking out that way, and that's right there. Is our property, like I said, we're trying to meet the mass um, <coughs> goals towards renewable energy. I mean, well, that's 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 it's cost of doing business. This is, you know, I, perhaps you this was a bad purchase, but uh, property for three years, so. so what you want me to feel sorry for you? you no, I'm just property. So, just, 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 buy, just we didn't just buy this, building. just, 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 like just for the record, this is this. For just for the record, this is a special permit, which means you need a supermajority, you need four or five members voting in favor. Yep. And that's just a comment that you need to satisfy at least four of the members to get an affirmative vote. I see no problem voting for this contingent on Mr. Earl and Eversource coming into an agreement that he accepts. And the way that plan is now, I would accept that with an eight foot tree, minimum eight foot, right around that perimeter that they show on this print. And the only question here in argument is John Earl. And if he's satisfied with Eversource, then they could proceed. Do you, do you have a problem with that, John? No. So. There might be a middle ground to your point that maybe you don't need to have a double stacked line of trees all the way across if uh, some of those could but I think you have to work out whether it would even be feasible I want to make sure it's a good barrier given, given the rate increase ever source requested from the uh, state they could put three or four layers of trees in there no problem so let's focus on the issues before the planning board uh, will you two exchange contact information so that you can um, get together and work something out, or if not, you know, it's it's become clear that Hadley is as the location of uh, the people want to put solar panels for obvious reasons. We've got open space, and I think we have to start looking closer and closer what well, we're going to make these requirements to be. Uh, look what happened on Mill Valley Road. I, they planted trees this high. It's, I'm, I'm going to be dead and gone before they they adequately adequately. Uh, Screen that property. Okay, the hearing will be continued to May 16th at 7:15. Next up is the Shady Lawn Two Lot Subdivision.
And we have a decision from the Zoning Board of Appeals. That's not it. Someplace. Waiting for the place to put them. We here for. I wish you hadn't said that. Please. I want you to vote against it. Yes, sir. Okay. We have a decision for the Zoning Board of Appeals, dated February. Well, the hearing was dated February 9th. The decision was dated April 11th, and the Zoning Board of Appeals granted the petitioner Peter Gelinas the variance for modification to an existing sub property to divide. Let me see. How is it exactly worded? <laughs> to grant you a request for modification to the existing variance based upon the following findings, and this basically is to create two lots. I'm not, I'll just make a note. I'm not participating in the decision. I'm just taking notes. Okay. So I believe the outstanding item for the very small, well, there was actually several small, several small reasons, things, and that was about whether this could be subdivided. That was a big one. That had been decided. And then there was a bunch of small issues on the actual design of the property. Yes, sir. So when we left, when we last met, I gave you these plans to look at, and we stopped our conversation because of the zoning board issue. And the zoning board, as Jimmy just said, made the decision to create a second lot here. So now the question becomes the width of the right of way and the width of the quote unquote road, which is in effect a driveway. So to refresh your memories, the blue is 34 feet wide in the back and not quite 34 feet wide at the road due to I had to put a curve in it to avoid a tree. Uh, so anyhow, the blue is to be conveyed to the butter, Mr. Kozier. He's using his property right now right up to the boundary line, and he would like a buffer. This land is not to be sold to Mr. Kozier. It is to be given to Mr. Kozier. Um, as the road, quote unquote road, will be serving one house, it seems to me that I have a 30 foot wide right of way with a 16 foot wide driveway proposed. And that is more than adequate to service one house. Now the last time we met there were many more abutters than there are, are this evening, but there was a common consensus that they didn't want to see a big you know, a 22 foot wide driveway there with a cul-de-sac on the end of it. Uh, so this lot is set up so that the road doesn't have a cul-de-sac in it. There's enough frontage to satisfy the bylaw. I've got the driveway created so that there's a turnaround that a emergency vehicles can utilize to get, you know, they don't have to back out all the way onto the road. Uh, and again, because it's only serving one lot, it's more than... Where's that turnaround driving? Right, yeah, right there. So they're driving here and back out there? Yes. Yeah. Sure. And, and, and that's, you know, it's just... Fire chief happy with that? You gave all this stuff to the fire chief, I believe, and I, I don't think there was an issue with it. I don't recall hearing that there was. Did he put anything in writing? Nothing from the fire chief. No. They were all given plans to this. Mr. Kosher is the only one we got a written response from. No. We have nothing from the police or fire or anybody. Does that mean we assume they are fine with it, or we assume that they normally forgot? normally they've given adequate time, and if they don't respond, we 
it's, it's, it's assumed to be okay by default. Um, but this was postponed and postponed. But yeah, and, and in there, if you would, defense, this is similar to other hammerheads that we've had around. It's not an unusual thing. You know, I, because it's fire protection, I, not only for that, but for the neighbors, I certainly would want his comment either he accepts it or doesn't accept it. Is there a hydrant somewhere on the end here? Right at the end of the street. One out right out at the, in the middle street, Johnny. Uh, right here? Right there, right there. Okay. That's there now? Yes. Yep. How close is that to the road? To? To the road. To the, or is it going to be to the driveway? To be five feet or so? Yeah, maybe six, seven, something like that. Okay, same as on the road. I don't think that's really any different than the flat lot that Ray Brown lives on right beside it where you pull up and you know you can either pull in and still back around. There's no difference in that. Yeah. My only concern with this whole thing was is that with what we're allowing in that neighborhood and or in many neighborhoods here is is that what we're not saying is that if it's a single family dwelling and it's a property that's going to be sold it's basically a small flag lot and it's going to be a resident what i was concerned with was that a great big old house is going to get built there you know two stories high there's going to be five bedrooms in it and three bathrooms in it and what's to stop that and oh wow we can't really sell this because nobody wants to buy this expensive of a house on this tiny little lot and so I guess we'll just have to rent it and that does affect our neighborhood for a lot of people so a single family dwelling small people are buying it they're moving into the neighborhood that was Jim that was recorded is supposed to be owner occupied in the ZBA decision is it recorded there because sometimes the they property in the back shall only be used as an owner occupied single family home and will be sold by Mr. Jul Mr. Julinus. Okay. That's recorded right in the Okay. It's in the decision. Right that's right in this variance. That's in that single family house. And and who this is an existing so this is this, this is a this is a variance. So it'll huh? be a Owner occupied. Owner occupied single family. And they can't put and, an accessory apartment there. And who would, that, who, who would enforce we, that? That that is correct. They can't put it. Cannot. Apartment. Cannot. Single family. And that's going to be listed in our finding. That's listed in the ZBA's finding. We can make that part of our decision yeah. as well your finding is always relative it pertains to every other board that has anything to do with this so that would right. become part of it automatically. well i just want to make sure there's no, no i get it yeah, no, no, I, because it was, it was a large section of neighbors yeah. that were not happy with this yeah. so and what they said when they went to i didn't go to the zba meeting when the first project went through but what i got out of them is that they were only supposed to build this one, not two. But the ZBA never wrote that down, is that? Oh, they went, they claimed they went through the, uh, the video of it and that was not mentioned. I thought it was as well. The video? They, the, they, the, the, that uh, was recorded. This, the public hear, the hearing for the uh, variance of the nursing home was recorded according to them. And they couldn't, that was, they viewed it and they didn't say anything about those comments. So by our zoning laws, they can put, the person that owns this can put a subdivision here by right. Is that correct? Correct. After the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing, they are allowed to have a subdivision by right. Now the question that Randy's putting before us is, are we going to require to follow them, the true definition of a subdivision no. regulation of a wider road and a uh, hammerhead or cul-de-sac at the end of the road, or are we going to give them relief and have them build a driveway, make it a private road, and the town will not maintain it. It'll be privately maintained. 
So that's the question before us tonight. A regular subdivision, this would not even qualify as a flag lot because there's, in the old days, it's because not, there's not enough square footage in where the house is going to be built. So it's a, they're asking for a lot of relief. If, if I have to have an opinion now, I, we do have wiggle room in our subdivision regulations saying that we don't have to follow the letter of the law of a subdivision. However, we do have discretion. You're asking for a smaller road, a narrower road. I would like to see a cross section of the road. Is it going to be just tar and gravel? Is it going to be a certain amount of gravel? Compacted? Is it going to be a significant road other than just a, well, a it, gravel driveway? So that, I would like to see a cross section of what the road is going to be, where the drainage will go, as any other situation uh, with the, when we used to do the old flag lots or a very small subdivision. So I would be inclined to make it a private road smaller as you're requesting. Mr. Kosher would get his uh, <coughs> square footage of uh, 30 feet. And just to feel comfortable, I would like to see a letter from uh, Fire Chief Spank Nagel so we can incorporate that into our, our decision. And I know Jim had a different opinion, so I'll, I'll quit talking. Jim's opinion is that we're giving up an awful lot just so this guy can, the, the developer can save money. And every other yeah. very small subdivision that we've approved, the town has gotten something for it in the terms of land that would be undeveloped. And in the case of this, the town is getting nothing. We're just getting a road we don't have to plow. Big, big to me, that's, that's nothing. That's not a win-win situation. I know you say we don't set precedent here, but have we ever granted this situation and not gotten, gotten anything back? No. No. Okay. Good. Yeah, but I mean, what about this lot here? This brown lot. That's a flag. Right, that's a flag. flag, flag. Well, that's the old flag. That, that, flag that's a completely for, different situation. But I mean, this is a subdivided. If they can do it by law, then how can you stop it? We're not stopping it. We, I'm, I'm not intending to well, stop then, it. He's well, not going to stop I'm it. Not it. Intent, I'm not stopping it. Why should somebody, somebody be bribed or forced to pay money? The question when before us is a, is a wide subdivision regular according to our subdivision regulations, right. or is it going to be a driveway? The neighbors don't want it. Nobody wants it. But on the, paper, it's, it's he can... E even, even on paper, it would not be... It would be a paper road. Even how many? Even on every other small subdivision, it's, it shows on paper a cul-de-sac or a hammerhead-type turnaround, but it's only built normally as a... Uh, private drive and that's my only comment here that we're, we're well, I can I can show that there's a plan somewhere up there that shows a cul-de-sac if I do that then Kozier loses a bunch of land that's not my concern I understand that's not your concern I also I mean I hear what you're saying and it's not this is not about let's save some money to make this more profitable. It's about what makes sense for the neighborhood. Do you put a 26 foot wide road in there to service one lot just because? Or do you go the other way and say, yeah, okay, I get it. This is going in anyhow. Let's make it more aesthetic for the neighborhood. Mr. Jolinas doesn't live in the primary property, does he? He does not. If he were living there, would he be proposing this, do you think? That's, I know that's a hypothetical question. I would, would he say be proposing? Yes. He would be proposing that. I would that. say yes. Okay. That's, that's, that's not a... And, but and the problem is, Randy, if... I was thinking, somebody's going to say, we're setting a precedent here, and if you ever come back with one more of these... No, I, I understand. You, you, you understand... I, I and, understand exactly what's and, going on. And, and I'm and, speaking to... Two men of integrity. I, I admire your integrity. I admire Jim's integrity. And uh, I'm willing to compromise on this one. And it, it bothers me a little bit because 
there's a, a lot that we're giving up as a town. And I hope what you're are not you setting a precedent. What well, are you giving up in a town? We don't set precedents here, Zeke. The, the, I mean, I'll, use, I'll use where I live as an example. Now, I, I, this was 15 years ago, but I've got a piece of land that was originally approved as a flag lot, and the permit expired, and my client says, what do I do? So I could make two lots fit on that property based on the subdivision regulations, ugly as all get out. None of the neighbors wanted to see it, so when we came to the board, all the neighbors said, look, don't make them put a cul-de-sac, don't make them put the wide road because it just doesn't fit in the neighborhood. It's a private road now and everybody's happy. It, it certainly costs less money to build it than it would have if it was a regular subdivision road, but it, the point was not about the money at the end of the day. The point was, how does it fit into the neighborhood right. and what makes the most sense? How's it gonna look? So, the, the reality here is this, if you put a subdivision road in, it's short enough that it's not going to cost more money to build it than the lot is worth. And that's typically, if I get people come to me, I want to do a subdivision, I want to do this, I look at, all right, you got to put in X amount of feet of road, it's going to cost you this much money, you've got this many lots, it's not worth doing it because it costs more money to build the road then you're gonna get out of the lots. In this situation, he's going to be able to build the road to subdivision standards and still be able to sell the lot and make some money. Granted, it won't be as much money, but it doesn't fit in the neighborhood. That's, that's the point. Comparing your subdivision to this, there was one lot put in and a whole lot of land not developed out of it. No, not mine. Two lots put in and everything was eaten up. We, we didn't have anything on that one. There was no extra land on that one. It was just, again, I, I showed you guys, I can do two lots, I can put a cul-de-sac in, it's stupid looking, and the neighbors all hated it. And we came to you guys and said, look, let's, let's do this, everybody will be happy, and that's what we did. And again, we're not, I'm not saying you set a precedent there. I, I thought there was land saved on no, that. No, there wasn't on that one. My point is that you realize it didn't make sense to do it. And so you agreed to, to make it a 16 foot wide private road. And that's, it's, it's no different here. It's, it's even a, a bigger situation here because it's basically downtown. And I, I realize that you guys are caught between a rock and a hard place. The state law says you have to allow it to happen in some way, shape or form. You can't say no. So. Knowing that, it seems to me that it makes sense that, okay, we don't like this, but what's best for the neighborhood is, you know. Well, you know, I think okay. he did a great job in the old uh, old folks' home there. It looked very attractive, and hopefully he's going to continue that in vain when he puts his house up here. No. Okay. So, need road standards? Letter from the fire chief. Yeah. Anything else? The cross section of what the road is going definitely to be. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I only want to say also is, is that when you look at this area of Middle Street and you look at the way the houses, the, the planning that went into this town hundreds of years ago, my house is 1851, um, these lots were, were laid out. They were bigger lots. They were nice lots. Most of them are several acres, two acres, three acres. Um, you know, and, and we're, now we're starting to pick away and put a little house here. And, you know, if Kozier gets that other land that he's not buying is being given to him, is that a building lot also off of the other? No. With a, with a variance? Um, you know, what, what does happen there? Can Kozier knock down that barn and put up? No. He can't subdivide that lot? No, he's tried that numerous times. It will not work. Okay. And even he with his added land, land, land. Because he didn't know the land behind it. It, it won't have, it, it's still not uh, doable. But with this land, you can't do it? No. But Good. you look at the beautiful homes that are built behind it, the little cul-de-sacs, the, the separation of the houses and stuff, you don't have that here. How big this, will this is, 
a red thumb in the middle of this how how, how, piece. how how big will close your property be with this afterwards so are you speaking for or against it um, I, you know I I'm think he's only got like and I, feet. I know I can't leave I don't have my scale the browns so. are not here they they are close this to this scale? they're yeah. on their way back from Florida they'll be back either late tonight or tomorrow sometime um, and and they called and said that they they are not this this house it's a, it's a hundred, is, hundred they feet. built their house they put it scale. at an angle so that they had the so lot the open view and everything else is much like this guy 30? And you know they got a beautiful home back there. It's set up. They have two and a half acres. They did the flag lot properly. You have they have a beautiful long depth. driveway, so and now they're going to have a house right, right in there. Well, then why didn't they buy the land? Why? Yeah, but where, once the zoning board of appeals gave yeah, them permission it. to build it, I got it. we we cannot deny it. Now the only question well, they're arguing about. Well, let's put in a whole road then. Put in a road in a cul-de-sac mm -hmm. and see how much no. we got left there to build a house on. No, it, it's doable. Okay. I don't yeah. want to see that. Um, couple notes to make, Mr. Dwyer, for the decision. And what that's going to be. You got the drainage all figured out on this? There was nothing. Where I was treating it as a driveway, so Joe yeah. wants to see that, so we'll have to. On or off, a single family dwelling, no accessory apartment. Okay. This is all in the aquifer recharge area. Yes. yes. Right. 200 uh, feet of frontage, 40,000 square feet is required. That's the minimum section. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so this is going to go in here. One of these, I thought I had. Parcel A. So you check this out, Jimmy? He can't That's go over here and No, no, no. Huh? He, he's got 140 feet of depth. He's got three, almost 400 feet of frontage. Okay, he can't subdivide it. He doesn't meet any kind of zoning, but he's got enough space. No, no, I, I'm totally fine space with this working. I'm totally to put two fine saying, on, so. I can't stop okay, this. Okay, so I'm maybe. Go ahead. Yes. Put that so in, I'm put that cul de sac in with that and build a house. Okay, back. so wait a minute. Let, let me so finish small. this. Okay. And nobody's going to want to buy that little post stamp lot back there. What he's saying is with this, it's almost an acre. So it's, uh, you're shooting yourself. What do you have in the front? You know, you got a column of dirt in the front of it. Yeah. So it's obviously going to be sewer. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> yes. And, uh, what size water main you can put in? The uh, whatever the town's going to require for the same <coughs> thing. It should be okay. it should be a one inch. Yeah, put more access for your put one inch. You know, get get the uh, get that. Why would you put a one inch line in the uh, street? Oh. All right. So you want to know what size water line? Yeah. What would the town require? Just so you can have it. For so a yeah, probably a three quarter to one inch. Okay. Yeah. Just for the record, Randy, I'm yes, also sir. going to put a couple other conditions in addition to the zoning board. One of them is the parcel A that is to be conveyed to Mr. Kozier yeah. is not to be further subdivided. Okay. That way they cannot make two building lots out of Mr. Kozier's property at any time in the future. Gotcha. Even though he'll have... I'll put a note on there. Right. Okay. okay. Um, parcel or lot number one will be owner-occupied, single-family dwelling, no accessory apartment, nor home occupation. Okay, so lot, lot one, single-family? Just, just what the zoning board put in there, owner-occupied, single-family dwelling. We're also going to put a clause in there, no accessory apartment, nor home occupation. But doesn't the... Isn't it of right by right, as you say, that you can have a home occupation? No, you can't have a right. you can't have a plumber there. Plumber can't work no. out of that house. Yes, yes. A home out home out. We, the way the bylaw is written. Thanks for the clarification. Make sure I put the make sure I put the right words in there. Yeah. Well, why are you worried about that? I don't want I don't want customers coming. I don't care if it's a plumber. Yeah, right. I don't just yeah. don't want I don't want customers yeah, gotcha, coming. Gotcha. There. I'm not for sure. Okay. I'm not sure if the right word is. I want to see what the bylaw calls it. Hmm. Well, isn't there a home occupation business right next door, Barstow's? Yeah, but he's he's on he's, he's right on the street. It's not going 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 to buy accessory what? apartments. Yes, there is.
page home. 60. You want me to put, Jimmy, or a home occupation that involves customers coming to? Home business. Home business? Wait a minute. He's reading the fine print. Good page. Um, section, page 20, no, <coughs> section 20, page 60. Page what? 60. Yeah. Page 60. 60. 60, 60. Six zero. Oh. See, I don't care if it's, a, if it's a trade that's conducted without customers, like a plumber or electrician where they have no customers, nobody coming to visit them is not what I'm worried about. It's something where they have... Well, you're not writing up a decision no. not tonight. I just so. want to. I just want to make. Well, yeah, we got time to make the right call for that. All right, and and the next that the next meeting, I'll have some of this stuff on the plan so you can look at it. And if there's Good. stuff you need to add because it's not gonna you're not gonna sign it that night if it gets approved. You're not gonna sign it that night anyhow. So. Okay. You want to continue this for the? For, you, will you be able to get the stuff in two weeks? I'm just asking you. Are we yeah, I know. I'm thinking. Um, I don't know who I can ask to do a little engineering work here. Uh, although I did have Spicepec do a, a the whole. Or you want to make it? The, you want to make it? Well, we could do the 16th. It would be a long meeting. Yeah, I think the two uh, solar ones are going to go pretty quickly. Yeah. I would prefer that. Do it on the 16th. 16th. I'm leaving for a week on Thursday, so that's going to cut a bunch of it. Randy, what's the link to this road to the house? About four hundred. Oh, this, 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 from here to here is three hundred eighty feet. So from here to here is probably two, 250. two hundred. It's two hundred seven to the corner to of the, the house. house to the two, house. Two hundred. So two hundred fifty, two hundred sixty, maybe. So we're continuing to May 16. Yes. Fire review, road design, and all right. So I will I will see uh, Spanktable myself and talk to him, show him what's going on, tell him what you guys are after. Uh, okay. Work out if he's got a problem with it. I'll change it according to what he wants and make sure he sends a letter to you guys. Okay. All right? Okay. So good. Just keep that in the file. Okay. Do you want any copies of that, or do you want me to just no. read from next time? No, because we already got those anyways, right? Well, we no, take no. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. We got an invoice to pay for the Daily Hampshire Gazette for huh? One forty-nine eighty. That wasn't that? paid. It must have been from a previous bill that wasn't paid. One forty-nine eighty. Legal legal notice. They paid one forty-nine eighty, but didn't pay the other one. I thought they had paid it. I guess not. Well, why don't we approve it and send it yes. in with the note to check, yes. verify whether this has been right. paid. We yep. might have just missed the uh, billings. Okay. Oh. Motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Okay, then we, we did get a letter from the Park and Rec Commission regarding Zatirica Park. Very simple note that says, Dear members of the Zoning B ZBA, please be advised that the Park and Rec Commission <coughs> formally voted to reaffirm its determination that the status of Zatirica Park as a park and that it has not been formally decommissioned by the Park and Rec Commission per Master in the Laws, Chapter 45, Section 5. Please be advised that the Park and Rec Commissioners shall have the authority given by to the Mayor, Alderman, Slackman, Road Commissioners, etc., 
under such said jurisdiction. Thank you for your attention, the Park and Rec Commission. So I guess that all of this work that the Zatirica Park Group is planning needs to be approved by the Park and Rec Commission as well as other boards that have authority before it can be done, any, anything can be done to it. That's just for our info. In that uh, letter reference that someone said they discontinued it as a park and it's not? Possibly. I didn't get into, I didn't look at all the details. I thought someone that. said that somewhere. I don't okay. know where I heard that. Um, at our next meeting on May 2nd, we will have a review of the public hearing on a, in the zoning amendments that are going to be on the town meeting uh, warrant for the 4th which is two days later. Speaking of that, um, <clears throat> the uh, town council reviewing the warrant articles came back with some comments about the recreational marijuana moratorium that we had proposed, which was based on something that the town administrator had put together. Uh, they said that they thought that their model article was better so um, because the warrant was just about to close, I put in proper numbering and said, send, send it over. But I, would, I think we should just take a vote to s substitute this for the prior text. So move. Um, any discussion? I'll yeah. second what, it. What did, what did he say about that, the, the other language? The other, well, I said among, the other, among other things, the other language didn't even have a definition of medical marijuana or recreational marijuana. Uh -huh. And um, that, was, that was the main thing. There was also a comment that we had a clause about uh, dealing in or, do, or um, there was a vague clause in there. And basically what uh, David Nixon had done was to take the medical marijuana moratorium from three or four years ago and just substitute the words uh, recreational marijuana. Um, so uh, this has a, has a more detailed preamble, um, but the, basi the basic, what we had in the prior text is basically what appears in 21.3 which just says, for the reasons set forth above, the town adopts a temporary moratorium. So uh, yeah. the preamble's a lot of, well, figured town council. You said the same thing, with a lot, well, same thing with a lot more words. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion is to substitute uh, text for Article 21. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Then we got a draft of the town warrant. I don't know if anybody else printed it out. And we're not at the end this time. We're next to the end. I'm we're next be, to the I'm end. But what is, what is Article 25? It's a petition article. Yeah. What is it though? Oh, I didn't look so at it. I, I had a discussion with the select some with some members of the select Steve. board and the yeah. town administrator about how right town business should go before petition articles. How big can they, yeah. I guess how they how listen this time. Article twenty five. It's to get money out of politics or something like that. Inch. Oh, Article twenty five. Here's the planning board, so they're off by one number on their ruling there. So twenty six. Oh, this is a. Okay, this is a p limiting polemic, political donations and the limit of influence of money in politics. This is, okay. Did you get anything for a sanctuary town? No. Not yet? No, not yet. So I heard you're going to petition the select one. You make this a sanctuary town. It already is. I won't put that one with it. It already is. Okay, uh, I'm going to make a um, motion to authorize town council to execute a stipulation of dismissal in the matter of Burkume versus Town of Hadley and others. That was the accessory apartment on Sylvia Heights. Right. Um, this uh, came up 
kind of quickly, so I authorized uh, Joel Bard to sign the dismissal because there's no downside to it. But uh, I think we should just take a vote to. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. So that was dismissed? That was dismissed. <clears throat> And they also, they had two cases filed. One was in land court against the property owners for violation of the neighborhood covenants, and the other was against the property owners and the planning board for uh, approval of the accessory apartment. And uh, both cases have been dismissed. Okay. So they're gonna, they can put the ac accessory apartment in now then? Yes, they can. Yes. And what about- It uh, was already there. And what about a letter going to Berkham operating a business illegal in the residential district? That's something for the- That's something for what? Bill, for the zoning the, enforcement the, officer. Zoning enforcement officer well, to look into just, if you want to complain to him. I, I wasn't aware he was doing that. Huh? I wasn't aware he was doing that there. Yeah, I heard he's running two businesses now. Of the property, the, 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 his Okimo LLC is the owner of the property. No. Okimo Limited Liability Company is the owner of the house. So what's that? Excuse him from the bylaws? I'm just commenting that oh. that's, there, there's a, a business <clears throat> that owns the house, or an LLC that owns the house. What really got me, he, he, build, he builds the house and he builds an apartment in it. And then he's complaining about it. Just for the record, I did make copies of the draft master plan and sent it out to the uh, uh, put one in everybody's mailbox and requested comments by May 15, 2017 on the draft. Just and was there any language in there if they don't respond? It's it's they they agree with it no I no. didn't put that in there it just says uh, please review and comment on attached plan by May 15 2017 please direct comments to the planning board by said date the planning board will review the comments and incorporate as appropriate into the plan the plan, the planning board intends to vote and accept the revised master plan by June 30 to 7 June 20 2017 okay. so that's kind of tells them that if you don't com don't comment we're going to vote on right. it. We're right. going to vote on it anyways. Yes, sir. Hi. Joe Eckerly, I talked to you guys a couple weeks ago about the tap room in Mill Valley Commons. Yes. And you guys are bringing the Butters labels back and giving to you guys and uh, that's what I'm here to do. Two copies of, yep. uh, of each. What's going in there? Did again? you fill out the application we gave you? Similar, I don't think so. No, no so it's, it's tap room to serve local. Oh, that's right. Craft okay. beers, craft right. wines. Correct, correct. Brewer, focused. Um, no, I don't know of anything like that, but frankly, I'll be honest. Yeah, so. You're just uh, fill it out. Simple enough. Oh, okay, this is. Okay. Right. So, basically, name, address, and what, what you're doing. Um, any other business? So we have to schedule this for a public hearing. Oh, yes. yes. Oh yeah, we gotta fill out the fee, yeah. Public hearing would be, make the 16th a busy night? Uh, I think that's too busy. How about uh, first meeting in June? Oh, Kristen was saying something about the 10th, is there, or, or the May 10th, I thought she was telling me? No, we only have two meetings a month, first and third Tuesdays. And we don't have enough time to get a legal notice out for the first Tuesday. Okay. And we have four other hearings scheduled for the so June 6th. Third. This would be the tap room, middle of it, June 6th. So you want know the landlord or the owner of the property there instead of me, the, the landlord of the, of the property? Be on here? No, if you, okay. just put down Mill Valley Common. Okay, like, got I it. We know okay. what that is. That's okay. fine. Property owner. Does he have to have a letter from the landowner stating that it's okay what he's doing? No. 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 We have not generally requested that because and we've never had an issue. We've yeah. only once had an issue with it. In only because years. if we grant it to him, if the landlord says we don't want that, that's landlord. Well, it just it, I think about the Paragus sign that he said the owner said yeah, the owner didn't say yeah. 
Yeah. That no. I've, got, I've got the yeah. lease agreement and everything else. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I'm happy to get that if I need it. It's, that's really easy. Um, no spot for my name. Just write my name anywhere on here. Yes, please. Okay. And a mailing address for you. Okay. Yes, that would be good. Some uh, flyers or something. Yeah, I just had a brief write up. Okay. Do you still have that? Do you still have one, Jim? Might be in the. Uh, okay. I cleaned out my notebook and I know I saw it, but it's back to the office. It might be in the uh, other room. And that day was June 1? June 6. June 6. Six. Okay. Well, it's right on here. Okay. Just take and file that with the town clerk and Great. the fee. Thank you very much. And you'll see you on June 6th. June 6th. Thanks, guys. Okay, thank yeah, you. I think his. Uh, You're not even listed on here as an address. How about that? That's okay. Anyways, all right, anything else? I have nothing else. I have nothing else. Motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you. Aye.